What's up guys, Patrick Egyptian Tardif here, and today we're going to be looking at one of the wildest preflop sequences I have ever seen on a major live final table. I'm going to let the hand play out first, and we're going to jump into analysis when things get really spicy. <laughs> it scrambles it, like, what do you mean these are the ranges we got to input? Oh my god. Ouch. JNT has already taken aces up against Kings. That's how he showered James Chen. Here he is now, three betting to a million over the top of Juan Pardo, who is going to be powerless to do anything other than flat. Look at the hands. It's ace king suited and pocket jacks. A three or four way confrontation incoming. I'll take the over on confrontation. This is Oppenheimer poker edition. Atomic. Truly nuclear. Explosive four bet incoming. Ra radioactive is this scenario. Geiger counters going nuts. I mean, one could not fault Stephen Chidwick for maybe thinking. I block both of the hands that are actually out there right now. I'm suited. A delightful four bet candidate. He's in there. Look at the jack, straight in the muck. Love that from Daniel Cates. Mind you, it was a cold four bed in front of him. Oh boy. Wait, did JNT say all in or not? Oh my. I, did you hear I that? I heard all in, and for a second I thought it was part of, but his lips didn't move. I mean, I don't know that it matters, but obviously you don't love to hear it. He's asking, he wants to know what count of the I thought I heard it, Ollie. Now, I got to ask you this. Is verbal action out of turn binding, Randy? It is if it doesn't change the action. So if Juan Pardo calls, I believe he can change his mind. I don't know. I'm not, I don't know the exact ruling. Given this situation, it's quite tricky. Action takes place in the Triton Poker $125,000 main event in London. It's the final table with six remaining players with, out of a total of 151 entrants. Blinds are 100,000, 200,000 with a 200,000 big blind ante. Juan Pardo here, under the gun off an 18 big blind sack, picks up pocket kings and elects to raise to 400,000. Jean Thorel, next to act, wakes up with aces and three bets to a million. At this point, we've already got quite the cooler. It folds around to the small blind Stephen Chidwick who looks down at Ace King suited and a very interesting decision point. He's the chip leader facing a short stack open and Thorell second in chips three betting. He covers everyone but not by a very wide margin. We enter a situation in the small blind where there's no calls. We're either raising or folding. It's a question of if we're continuing, what's the sizing? He elects to make it 2.3 million. The sizing gives him a lot of utility. If he were bluffing with a hand like ace-5 suited, for example, it gives him the efficient price to take down the pot then and there. When value betting with hands like aces or kings, it gives his opponents room to make mistakes and still be able to put money in with worse hands. In the case of ace-king suited here, it gives us the ability to get it in versus one opponent and fold if two or more people look to put chips in, as we're likely drawing pretty slim. Jungle Man in the big blind is now hit with a doozy. We're facing a cold four bet, six left in a major final table, and we've got the troublesome pocket jacks. I absolutely love how he recognizes the situation, wastes no time, and immediately mucks his hand. This spot quite literally might be an aces only continue and versus this action. Putting in money with any other hand is likely to be a mistake, and we'll look to confirm it later in the video. With action back on Pardo, the spot is already a doozy of its own. However, we're hit with the biggest curveball as Thorell announces all in before Juan Pardo has even acted. With Kings facing Chidwick's 4-bet, it still feels like a situation where we'd want to put all the money in the middle. Once Thorell announces all in, we're not only needing to be ahead of Chidwick. Thorell has a strong range that we also need to be doing well against. Let's take a look at the simulation output and see what the computer says about the hand. As we take a look at the output, we can see Juan's opening a tight but reasonable range. The big stacks being hijack and small blind are the most ideal as they are the two positions least likely to attack our opens, especially from early position. I'm sure we could shift these to be a little bit tighter, a little bit more aggressive if needed, but this feels like a good baseline. One of the trickiest spots would be to range Thorell. 
Nanonoko in the commentary booth makes a great observation. Thorell scrambles the computers. He's a very tricky businessman who likes to get in the mix. For the sake of simplification, we'll leave the, these ranges the same. He's viable to be calling or raising most of the hands. The exact combos and frequencies that can get called or 3-bet will vary, but likely won't impact the tree when looking at 3-bets. The first interesting situation is Chidwick. We can jam or 4-bet not all in here, with our not all in 4-bets being aces, kings, and ace-king suited, with a smidge of suited ace-x as bluffs. No surprise Chidwick, the legend he is, finds the optimal decision here in this tricky situation. I think if we were to start trimming some 3-bets from Thorell's range, however, this might end up preferring a jam. As predicted, Jungleman was correct to snap fold the pocket jacks as it's an ace-king suited kings and aces situation. To be honest, initially I would have assumed that it was only kings and aces, but when we give a larger amount of 3-bet and 4-bet bluffing combos, ace-king suited starts to perform a bit better. Finally, we reach Juan Pardo. If Thorell has not acted out of turn, this would have been a trivial situation and an easy all-in for him. Once Thorell has acted out of turn, we eliminate all the bluffs from Thorell and put him strictly on value. We need to seriously consider what snap jams without thought and how kings performs. Best case, it's maybe ace king suited or pocket queens. Those would likely take a bit of time and size up options. Even when it's the best case scenario, we're still up against Chidwick's ace king pocket kings range. Can Juan Pardo make the incredible fold? Will Chidwick get away from ace king suited here? Let's watch the rest of the hand play out and then we'll talk about it after. Efforting, by the way, in a quick discussion on the sidebar with producer James, what the implications of this out-of-turn verbal declaration by JNT are in terms of Juan Pardo. If Pardo were to raise himself, then JNT gets his action back. This if he flats, though, James... Okay, so we're being told that if Juan Pardo flatted, he could force the all-in from JNT. Not that with these two hands specifically, Randy, anything different is going to happen. I mean, this is... But, Ollie, he's using multiple time banks, actually thinking about folding these two kings. There's no other reason. Because it's insane for JNT to still jam. Look at the stack size. This is number one and number two in chips, and he's saying, I want to commit all of them. Out of turn. No way. He folds two kings. Ali. Was it 7-6? Yes. Mind-blowing. I'm actually speechless. As I have to imagine, Randy, that it was JNT's out of turn all in that had everything to do with Juan Pardo finding the muck and miraculously sparing himself. Look at this. He suspected he was up against aces, and he was right. This, I have to say, in all the years that I've been doing commentary, Randy, is the most insane hand that I've ever observed pre-flop. I agree. What an amazing fold. Two kings. And Chidwick showing... Acute optimism, as he says, sounds like spades are alive. Only one hit this flop in a 16 million chip pot. Number one and number two. Chidwick has JNT covered. That's the only mercy as the five of diamonds on the turn leaves him drawing dead and leaves me absolutely shell shocked. In the end, Juan makes the most incredible laydown of the series. He folds the pocket kings, evades disaster, and allows Chidwick to be the one that takes the fall here in this massive pot. As we can see as well, Chidwick does not get away from the ace-king, feels a bit priced in, kind of hopes maybe Thorell also has ace-king or pocket queens himself, and does elect, I put too many chips in, and finds the call. Overall, this is just an absolutely fascinating hand. 
And I don't think we'll ever see anything like this, because not only do we need the pre-flop cooler that took place, kings, aces, ace, king, pocket jacks, but we also need the variable, which is Thorell acting out of turn, which just makes this hand so incredibly intricate and fun to take a look at. Now, personally, I'm a little bit pained that Juan Pardo made the correct fold, given our history in the $100 Global Millions a couple years ago, where I made what turned out to be an incorrect hero fold. Please don't do it. Please don't do it. Please, just check. Please don't think I can fold an ace. Please don't think I can fold an ace. Please. <sighs> so fucking nice. This king jack is in the tens. I don't think he's tripling off like king five. Like I don't think he's trying to make me fold an ace, and it's just making me want to fold. I don't think I don't think he's trying to make me fold an ace. I mean, you could have like just like I think the problem is like I just have like the absolute top of my range, but I don't know if it matters. The only better things I have are sixes, ace ten, ace six. Um, I guess ace jack, limp jams, ace king, limp jams. Like I have top, but like I don't think he's trying to make me fold an ace. If he shows some sort of gangster bluff, I mean, God, it's like. He's a very good player, he's very capable, but like I just don't think he's trying to make me fold an ace. God, it's just like I, I don't think we're ever gonna see like like I don't think we're ever gonna see like King Five. Hmm. Oh no. Oh no. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of the analysis. What do you guys think of my Holden Resources Calculator ranges? Would you change anything? What do you guys think Thorell's 3-betting range actually is in this situation? Feel free to leave any comments, concerns, and we will see you guys on the next Hand History Review.